you can you can think of it as you can bring this p here you can bring this q there so it's basically the the the, the percentage change in um, uh, q with respect to p for i and percentage change in q with respect to p for j so it's it's you can also think of it that way but basically it's the elasticity of substitution how these two q uh, i and j how are they substituted right so the how how are they substituted that is that is captured by uh, sigma so now if we uh, go um, a little further to go to the actual um, okay you can take this as a optimization problem this is not in the model i mean this is not all these uh, derivations are not in the model but the model assumes that these are already taken into consideration right so you have this uh, uh, production function and you define the lagrangian uh, which is basically the um, uh, sum of you, you basically maximize the minimize the cost piqi subject to this constraint right so that's that's how lagrangian is defined so this is the production function so you take this as a constraint and then when you solve uh, you 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 uh, solve it with respect to the the inputs you basically get into uh, in terms of uh, in terms of so this is the solution this is the complicated solution in levels right you have a lot of um, you know a uh, lot of uh, expressions terms here but if you go in the percentage changes way it is much simpler and this is when you will appreciate why you know cs is so widely used particularly in in uh, cg models so now forget about all the theories we learned so far like uh, all the equations we did so far just focus on these two equations these are the only equations that you will see in the model so now i think and daniel you may you may you may ask why we have p here um whereas we just discussed before that in the model we have ps and pfe and so on so this is again this is not a model uh, uh you know uh, uh, representation it is more like symbolic uh, more like a high level uh, equation so here we only i is the only index variable you know uh, we we do not talk about regions we do not talk about commodities and um uh, uh, specific commodities and so on but we just we, we we keep the input commodities but when it comes to output we just take uh, p so we we could have easily said p o but we just keep it p for here so this p the price of um, producing the commodity is a weighted sum of all the prices of inputs percentage changes imagine uh, remember this is percentage changes so p equals share times sum of share times price so now going back to our the equation that we had before right so going back to this equation right this is exactly what we show there so this is the this is the p that we show in that equation and these are all pi's like various p price of various inputs and stc is all the shares so you multiply the share by individual i's individual prices then you get the uh, aggregate price right so sorry so the aggregate price is the sum of shares of individual prices times the uh, uh, the individual prices the the, 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 uh, the summation of shares of individual inputs multiplied by the individual prices what do you mean by individual inputs individual prices price of a particular you know factor or a particular intermediate input and so on so that is one part of the answer the second part of the answer qi so uh, remember remember what does um, what does what is our objective our objective is to get in put quantities uh and okay uh in input prices demand for next uh you want to determine the input quantities 
uh, and the output price, right? So net, net, you, the nest, from the nest input prices, you get the nest output price. And we also get input quantities, I think even before this. In the very beginning, demand by firms for primary factors and intermediate inputs. That is what we want to find, right? Um, and, and then we later found that additionally, we also had to find the prices, the input input prices. So nest input prices, also we have to find and and the sorry the the nest output price also has to be defined the output price has to be defined and the input quantities have to be defined so that's what we do here so what we do here is this is the output price output price is the simple summation of all the input prices so now take this and just go to forget about economics go back to accounting so if you are an accountant um if let's say that uh, your labor cost increases. That would uh, increase your total cost, right? Uh, now, if you have to do an analysis on that, if the labor cost increases by 10%, how much will my total cost increase, right? So basically you'll see, okay, labor cost increase by 10%, how big is labor cost in my total cost? That is the share. We take the share and other costs have not increased, so others are all zero but labor cost increased by 10%. The share of labor in total cost is, let's say 10%. So your total price, total cost have increased by 1%, right? This is almost like a simple accounting identity, but we derived it from a proper economic optimization problem, right? So that is a nice thing about this. So you can, you can to interpret this equation, you probably don't even need much economics to interpret this because you can just an accounting thing just a uh, accounting way of thinking about it. In fact, a lot of things in a CGE model are kind of accounting. The only places where you have some changes are like when you see things like Sigma, right? Um, in Sigma, what happens is it's, uh, it captures a behavior, right? So behavior, uh, CGE models are a combination of data and accounting linkages and behavior, right? So this, if you just look at this, this is more like, uh, you know, data and, and, and accounting linkages. And this one, you have sigma, so that is more behavior. Why is it behavior? So let's say QI is quantity of labor demanded. So this is the labor demanded to produce this particular commodity output. And percentage change in that is percentage change in total output minus uh, elasticity of substitution between this input and all the other inputs, PI and P. So P, if you take P, it is summation of SIPI, right? So here you have PI for all the I's. So here you have P for all the I's. So here this uh, substitution captures the substitution between labor and all the other inputs, right? So that is the, uh, uh, you know, interpretation of this. So now, so this we'll just show once, but for all the remaining uh, discussion, all the different theories we are going to discuss, we'll have a production fun you'll have an objective function. And at the end of the objective function, you'll get an equation for price, you'll get an equation for quantity. That's all we have to uh, keep in mind. That's the CES solution. Okay, so, so far we, I'm, I still only talked about these are all generic discussions. I'm still, I still haven't uh, started explaining you what is in the GTAP model. So, so far, these are all general CG discussions, right? Um, so now I'll come to the the GTAP um, definition, and this this is a, this is going to be uh, relatively easier because we have defined what is nest and so on. So now it is going to be easier, and after this we can take some questions. Um, okay, so we have. Moments. So, okay, so now um, what we do here is this is the final product. Let's start from here. To produce the final product, you need a uh, value added, and value added is basically land, labor, and capital, right? And you also need intermediate inputs, and intermediate inputs are basically all the products. So, now let, let's take an example. I think if I give an example, it will be clearer. Uh, to produce a shirt, 
So let's say shirt is a final product. You need labor and capital uh, because shirt shirt is not an agricultural product, so you don't need land because land is only agricultural land. So it's only labor and capital. And to produce shirt, you also need uh, cotton. Let's say cotton for now. Um, it may be cotton, it may be uh, plastics, it may be dyes, all these things together. Um, and that is this aggregated intermediate inputs. All the different uh, intermediate inputs are here. So now in the intermediate inputs, you have, um, it can be either domestic or it can be imported. And then among the imported, it can be coming from individual regions. It can be coming from a particular, uh, particular country. So there is country to country substitution also. So this is how the nested CES production function is defined. So here for, for at each level, there is so E sub T elasticity of substitution between value added and intermediate inputs. E sub V A is a elasticity of substitution between the value added commodities, basically land, labor, and capital. E sub D is a substitution between domestic and imported inputs. Uh, e sub M is a substitution between uh, inputs coming from different regions. Okay. So now we look at the variables. So QO is the final output for a produced commodity P and uh, region S. So here we use for region, we use uh, uh, S because R is the region of origin from where from where uh, things come and S is the region of destination. So if you start from here, um, you know, QXS is the bilateral import variable. So you're importing cotton, let's say T is a traded commodity for this example, let's say cotton, cotton coming from a region R to region S. So once it comes here, it is region S. So this whole thing is happening in a region named region indexed S. So that's why we have S everywhere. This is a region S. So the import comes in and then the import can be, uh, this is uh, the firm, the, the intermediate demand uh, uh, for, for imports. This is the intermediate demand for domestic. So cotton, you're importing cotton. Uh, it can be domestic, uh, domestic or imported. So QFD is domestic, QFM is imported. So this last M stands for imported, D stands for domestic. And then that is aggregated. There is, an, uh, there is a substitution between domestic and imports. Then that is aggregated into QF. That is a total intermediate inputs. Total, in our example, total cotton used for uh, producing fabric. Uh, now here, coming here, you have QFE. This QFE may be familiar to you because we just saw PFE for uh, price of factor endowment. So this is the quantity of factor endowment. So for quantity of factor endowment, you have you know, labor and capital. Um, um, and and for, for them, you have this um, uh, substitution going on between labor and capital. That's what happens here between this different QFEs. Then that is aggregated into VA, QVA, that is Q value added, quantity of value added. So now the quantity of value added intermediates are aggregated to get the aggregate production. So here R stands for region of origin, S stands for region of destination. So R to S, origin to destination. P stands for produced commodity. So you have typically, if you have two dimensions, P would be the first, the first uh, index variable. When you have three dimensions, P would be typically the second because P is the demanding the produced commodity and T, uh, T is a traded commodity that is used. So to produce a, a shirt or, or to produce fabric, you need cotton. So fabric is P, cotton is T. Similarly, to produce uh, fabric, you need labor. So fabric is P, labor is E. So, so that's how uh, we think about it in this, in this uh, function. Uh, any any questions so far? Okay, so we saw the import substitution. Okay, so now coming to the 
uh, the solution. What is the solution of this? So we're going back to the definition we had before. So P for each uh, level, the price is a sum of input prices and some uh, weighted sum of input prices. And the quantity of input is quantity of output minus the substitution. Okay, th there is another way of thinking about this. I think this way you may, you may relate it even more. So you know this uh, expansion effect and substitution effect, right? Or income effect and substitution effect. This is very, very common in microeconomics, right? Uh, so Q, you can think of it as expansion effect. And this is substitution effect. So what do you mean by expansion effect? So quantity of labor demanded increases because quantity of output increases. So you're producing more. So since you're producing more, you need more labor, right? So that is the impact of Q. 